Welcome to Art Cake. This is Urvicha. And this is Yamini. We love to talk about art. So do join us as we share our insights of this world with you. Hi, Yamini. Hey, Urvicha. So today, of course, we thought we'd talk about a subject that, uh, you know, we both are very interested in and find fascinating. And I've learned a lot from you on this as well. Is the journey of women artists in India, especially post-independence? and why it has been such a special journey. Yeah, absolutely. And I think before we get on it, we should wish all our listeners a very happy Chinese New Year, which is yes, the year of the time. Yes, we're recording this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Yes, absolutely. So it kind of puts us in context, which is also a good place because, you know, what we were just discussing a short while ago, um, the art world is abuzz with Madhvi Parikh. Uh, paintings being blown up for the Dior, uh, you know, the runway show that they had on 24th of January. I think it's fantastic. Um, I wouldn't really go back to the decades of the 40s, but kind of start mm-hmm. somewhere in the you know late 60s or 70s and, uh, you know, pick up just a few artists, I think, that resonated and with, that we've been discussing for a long period now. But mm-hmm. first, let's talk about Madhvi why that is so special or why that is so unique is uh, here is an artist who is, uh, you know, married to an um, artist who's trained academically, that's Manu Pare. She never actually underwent any formal art education. Of course, she must have seen what her husband does and, you know, surrounded by artists. But she is somehow over these decades, like, you know, like say at least four decades, has created a language that is so unique and so strong. Um, most typically, when you do a search, you'd come up with saying that, oh, she has got the folk idiom um, in her work. But I think it goes beyond that. Yes. You know, she's an artist who's lived in the city and who's who's well-read um, in what, what's happening around her, is exposed to a whole lot of the cultural scene. But mm. yet, her way of expressing is so direct and is is straightforward from her perspective. And that, I think, is what makes her work powerful and strong. Mm. And of course, you know, the scale that they are done in today is also something phenomenal. But by the way, she's also done a you know a whole, a whole range of works which are you know large and monumental. Yes. yes. Scale. And uh, we both well, she takes uh, uh, she takes very naturally to large canvases, you know, which yeah, yeah. We're talking true, earlier true. about the themes, you know, you may not always draw that, the link. Especially, you know, because the subjects that he deals with, you mm. know, it's things like um, my village, uh, the family, or even mm. some of the gods or the goddesses that she imagines. Yeah. And, you know, she just doesn't hold back. I think that's something that's that just moves you when you look, you know, look at her work and her scale. And also mm. the fact you know, she uses things like lines and, you know, the, the splash of colors that is there, very bold in a definitive manner. So there's, there's this very interesting blend or, you know, a subject that's so personal, but it is dealt with in a scale or in a form that goes beyond that, you know, that personal narrative and makes it something that anybody can kind of, uh, you know, relate to it. That's, I think, what is very strong uh, about her work. And also, I think, you know, when uh, when you look at artists, especially women artists uh, who worked and created something very unique, we can talk about, uh, you know, the other name that just keeps popping up in my head about this is Mrinalini Mukherjee. Do you remember when we were at that India Art Fair in 2019 and we both just kind of stood in front of her work? We were awestruck. <laughs> Absolutely. And both of us are not the selfie or, you know, let's yes. take a picture kind, but both of us wanted a picture with that work. It was, by the way, from, the, you know, the Kiran Nadar Museum of Art. And they had one booth dedicated only to her work. Tell and, tell the viewers what work that was. Absolutely. So, um, again, um, Rinalini Mukherjee works with macrame. Now, you know, as kids, when we went to school, that is something that you do as your craft or your hobby class. And you had these wall hangings that were done. But here she has transformed, for a lack of better, the humble medium 
into mm-hmm. something that is monumental and you don't even uh, kind of mull over the fact or say oh it's macrame or oh, it's textile they are powerful beauties literally kind of you know mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. again he plays with scale you know the texture that comes into it it's phenomenal and what a pedigree you know mrinali mukherjee has sorry for that word but uh, her father this is binod bihari mukherjee her mother is also an a sculptor you know she's trained academically through and through but yet she picks up something so boldly which is associated with an intimate space a personal space something that that is more of a craft based thing because yes. it's not about pattern it's about repetition it's not so much about it's not an innovative medium but it is something that has a power to connect power to take you through that next level and that is something that's so so powerful on the other hand while we're talking about these uh, intimate personal spaces there's another artist i think that again um we uh, remember every time we go used to go to the ngma we would yes. stand in front of this work of uh, uh, meera mukherjee yes and oh my god what a work that was it was this, the the woman who was known as winno the winnower and uh, again sculpture and what she did was something so so special because again trained academically she went on a scholarship to germany you know learns about casting steeped into the whole thing of modernism and uh, a new visual language that was taking place but what she what she comes back to india she settles and she works in bastar and again she transforms the craft based dokra casting which is basically you know a lost wax casting process and which has got this very unique uh, characteristic that is rolled out a wax which is laid and made into coiling method as they call it in okay. sculpture typically is because of the technique you know oh. using wax and the delicacy they are very smaller pieces to give you a very quick example if you go to any of the crafts bazaar in, in delhi hart or anywhere in the country you have these small metal figurines you know which are yes, coiling yes. and they have little keychains and animals and they look cute they are oh. all tiny but oh. what meera mukherjee does is that she makes them in scale she takes it up again into a different level and it's not easy but she manages oh. it you know one of the best examples of monumental sculpture using this lost wax process is her figure of ashoka which is in uh, itc moria in delhi a sculpture that's almost 10 feet tall that's mm. huge and she manages to do that and she makes it so effortless you know so i think what we're talking about is uh, three different ways in which women have uh, converted materials which were or concepts or scale into a different language and a dimension altogether interestingly uh, mira mukherjee also worked with embroidery so kantha embroidery which comes from uh, west bengal and also mm. you see in some parts of it in bihar she actually did a whole lot of training for the women to kind of give them a new direction and yeah. change this whole form of embroidery and what is this embroidery it's simply running stitch even today there are so many who do you know beautiful uh, pieces of quilts traditionally used her embroidery pieces are just phenomenal not many people have seen it but they're very well documented you know they again beautiful pieces and that's the beauty of it that they move between these various mediums traditionally seen as you know the space of women in the home hobby or craft but they don't take these barriers they're not hindered by the limitations which are kind of perceived for these mediums and they take it and they own it and they do something that is so so mind blowing no absolutely um, again, that's why we were keen to sort of bring it out in a conversation is that these artists are powerful artists um absolutely you know look at the techniques that they're using 
which you would, you know, mind boggles as to how Meera, uh, Minali Mukherjee should, would have created that big sculpture for macrame. I still haven't gotten my head of it, but it speaks a very yeah. powerful language. And that's what's so fascinating about this. Absolutely, absolutely. I think this is one more artist that we should speak about. I think I can't end the conversation without bringing yeah. her in. And that is <laughs> another of my, um, you know, favorite artists is Pilo Poch Khanwala. What she did was, again, there was this moment in the 70s where, you know, working with scrap was something that was new or considered to be the new thing to kind of work with. And she was one of the pioneers and the early users of scrap to make sculpture. And she's created some phenomenal work. I remember, again, I think I must have brought it up earlier, but as a child when I was growing up in Mumbai at Haji Ali Circle, there was this large peacock sculpture that she had done, which is almost like a, you know, like a marker for me saying that I knew my bearings in the city as to oh. where I was. And that, oh, this has come, now I know where I am. And I would be fascinated by it to look up, you know, to that large peacock that she had done, which mm. also was by, with using scrap material. So I think our listeners would have got a hang of what we're trying to say is that the material that the women artists have dealt with or these artists have dealt with were something that was not looked at in great seriousness, mm. but they transformed it and they gave it a new language and they just kind of created a body of works that was so stunning. There are many more that we can talk about, but I think, you know, for this particular session, these four are great. And, I, you know, I, I will hope people kind of look up and look at these works and see what magic has been created by them. And just to sort of, I guess, uh, bring the conversation the full circle, you know, so when Madhvi gets acknowledged at uh, fashion, uh, you know, high haute couture, uh, brand like mm-hmm. or uh, at the Paris, you know, runway in that kind of public uh, scrutiny and global scrutiny of the fashion world, especially, you wonder why that kind of attention as, you know, she doesn't garner that kind of attention with, you know, within her own workspace in India. Uh, you know, Simit mm-hmm. Nali Mukherjee, her solo show that was hosted by Matt Breyer, I think that was again two, three years ago. But, you know, we don't get that kind of solo women shows as much as, especially at that scale or, you know, which you think they they deserve for sure. Absolutely. But I think we can be hopeful. And always, but surely, (laughs) we'll we'll keep seeing these uh, works, not only of the names that we know, but I hope there are more artists that are being discovered and celebrated and, you know, uh, brought to the forefront for people to look at and enjoy. And make that experience of art in India more um, layered and nuanced. I think that's what comes through it. There is not so much about who gets left out or it's a man or a woman, but it's so much about what were the responses that people had or artists had and how it came across through their creativity. I think that's important. And that's what makes the experience that much more wholesome. Very true. So thank you for, you know, that, Yamni. I, I know I also find it more instructive than usual. So. <laughs> no, not that I see. It's not instructive otherwise. But that yeah. was an interesting yeah. conversation. Super. So till the next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You were listening to Art Cake, where we share personal views on subjects in the art world. For more such content, please visit our website, www.artkick.com. That's A-R-T-K-Y-K. Keep listening.